Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, and today we talk about uh, spelling uh, corruption as an augmentation technique. Uh, our talk uh, consists uh, of three steps. Uh, today, we give you problem overview. The next step, uh, we present two augmentation methods, and uh, in the end, we show you their demo. Uh, augmentation is a family of uh, methods uh, extending the data sets at, uh, with similar objects. Augmentation helps uh, improve on downstream task, improve performance, uh, increase robustness of the model, and many, many more. Uh, we present two augmentation methods. Uh, the first, the first is uh, is augmentex. Uh, we limit our scope only on spelling corruption. Uh, augmentex uh, it employs uh, statistic on most common spelling uh, errors, keyboard uh, misclicks, and some heuristics. It may be used. Uh, it may be used for black box uh, attacks uh, on machine learning models as well. And uh, second method uh, is statistic uh, based spelling corruption. Uh, it uh, mimics human behavior while making an error. It uh, language agnostic in some degree, and uh, it needs parallel corpus. Uh, Augmentex uh, supports two separate augmentation modes. Uh, the first is a uh, word level, uh, and it has uh, five methods. Uh, the first method uh, uh, replaces uh, random word, random selected words, with the correct spelling uh, on the same word with errors uh, uh, based on. Uh, Probabilities of years uh, collected from open sources. Uh, the second mode, uh, second method, uh, remove random words uh, from the text. The fifth method uh, swaps random uh, selected words uh, standing side by side. The, the fourth method. Uh, at uh, most frequency used uh, filler words to a random place. And the last method, uh, ch change uh, the case of the first letter uh, in words. The second mode is a character by character change, and it has uh, six methods. Uh, the first method uh, changes the case of randomly selected characters. We simulated the press uh, shift K on the keyboard. The second method uh, replaces randomly selected characters uh, with others, depending on the frequency of their use. Uh, statistical Statistics on the use of incorrect letters were collected from open sources. Open sources. The, the next uh, method, uh, uh, little similar with uh, second, uh, it uh, replaces uh, ra random selected uh, characters with with neighboring. Uh, K on the keyboard uh, with uh, simulates uh, when you rapidly typing on the keyboard. The fourth method uh, remove random characters from the text. Uh, the the fifth method uh, polar opposite. Uh, uh, for 
polar positive both methods he it uh, randomly repeated uh, randomly selected characters uh, in the text uh, which simulates uh, when you when your key on the keyboard is ticking and uh, some characters repeated and the last method uh, swaps two random characters uh, standing by side by side uh, in the text in our in our work we use uh, augmentx uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, another black box attacks model uh, We improve uh, our resistance uh, for attacks from the user. Uh, such learning, uh, such uh, training strategy not only increases uh, quality of the model, but uh, that is uh, relevant, so variety of responses, but also decre decrease uh, training time, convergence time by, by training. But during by by during training uh, on five percent, uh, our black box model uh, uh, would be divided into three stages. The first stage is a red rectangle on the screen. Uh, we need to find candidate uh, for replaces. Uh, for this, we iteratively deleted one word from the text and uh, measure uh, distance uh, between vectors of RAS uh, before and after deleting the word. Uh, naturally, we use trainable uh, or attacked model for this. Uh, on the second stage, we need to find synonyms uh, uh, for these candidates. Uh, for this, we use uh, another model, present model, uh, name, named uh, observer model. Uh, usually, we use a little size model for speedy working. Uh, and we use uh, morphological analyzer pmorphy2 to restore consistency of words. Uh, in, this, in the end of second stage, we use uh, several candidates uh, for replacing. And in the third stage, we need to choose finally paraphrase for replaces. For this, we need to Uh, again, uh, measure uh, dis distance and damage uh, between uh, original phrase and uh, our uh, paraphrase candidates and take uh, if their aggregation. Uh, for example, we, we can use uh, damage uh, divided on one plus one plus distance thank you mark uh, my name is nikita i'm working at uh, the bird devices nlp rnd team and uh, in the next few minutes i'll be talking about statistical based spelling corruption as you can see from the slide uh, now <clears throat> While augment text tries to somehow corrupt the text in terms of types of errors that it inserts into the sentence and the relative position in the sentence, uh, statistical based spelling corruption tries to mimic uh, human behavior while making an error, make it more natural, right? So uh, the algorithm is fundamentally consists of two major steps. First step, we analyze the corresponding distribution of errors in the uh, source sentences. Uh, 
then we gather a statistic from it and in the final step we apply it to the correct text in order to somehow uh, broke them. Uh, sorry. Before we proceed to the actual algorithm, we have to make a stop and um, point out what we consider to be an error. So in our case, uh, we, in order to uh, define the notion of error, you have to have two sentences, uh, one of which is considered to be correct um, by the human annotator, right? So uh, then, uh, given that any differences between this correct sentence and a source sentence, which can be expressed as uh, an insertion, deletion, substitution of the characters or the transposition of two contiguous characters, uh, we consider these changes to be an error, right? So uh, with uh, this assumption in mind, we can proceed to the first step of the algorithm where we collect the statistics about the appearances of different errors in the sentences. We track down three random variables, which are a uh, number of errors per sentence, types of errors that are encountered in a sentence and their relative position. Uh, if we would have been given enough time, we would show you that these three random variables are correctly defined random variables based on correctly defined uh, probability triples. But for now, you just have to proceed with uh, this belief in mind, right? Given all of that, we now move to algorithmic side of the first step where we detect an error itself. So uh, as I said earlier, you're gonna have a parallel corpus where you have uh, correct sentences labeled by, labeled by human annotator and uh, sentences that may contain an error of some type, right? First thing, you build a Levenstein or to be more precise, demiral levenstein matrix between the corresponding prefixes of uh, source and correct sentence, right? Then you traverse these, this uh, matrix back, starting from the bottom right corner, and um, effectively you find uh, the solution of uh, assignment problem, but with a strict restriction that you have a bottom right element uh, in this solution, right? Uh, according to this uh, solution, you will have you ended up having. Uh, types of errors and their position uh, in the source and correct sentence. You can use both uh, wherever your purpose is, right? Next, you aggregate this statistic and normalize uh, it to correct discrete probability distribution. So uh, as you can probably come up yourself, number of errors per sentence and type of errors naturally resumes to uh, multi or categorical uh, discrete distribution parameterized by the frequencies of the corresponding categories. And the relative position in a sentence naturally could be thought as a uh, continuous random variable, but we find it hard to, to model, right, uh, in our setting in the real data. So we categorized these uh, continuous distribution into the 10 categorical um, random variables. So we uh, effectively treat these uh, random variable as categorical again. Uh, it's easier to model, right? So this is the first step. Uh, as a result, you have three probability uh, distributions, to be honest, uh, estimates of them, and now you can proceed to the actual corruption. Once you have uh, these three probability distributions, it's very easy in procedure, so you get the correct sentence. Uh, the important thing is that uh, this correct sentence uh, must not contain er any errors that are not made by, alg by our algorithm or it just uh, breaks all the thing. 
So you get the correct sentence, use sample uh, number of errors that will be um, included, inserted in that sentence. Next for each error, you sample its type, you sample its uh, interval, because again, remember, we treat uh, the relative position in sentence as the discrete uh, random variable. So we sample an interval, we scale back uh, the, the boundaries of this interval to the actual length of the um, sentence. Then we find correct position uh, within this interval for the narrow, and then we insert it. That's very simple. So why uh, would we ever come up with this type of algorithm? Uh, first thing first, we did it for the purpose of resolving spell checking problem. Uh, you know, rational language and many other languages are getting scarce in terms of uh, data set for spell checking problems. So it's very hard to find a data set with the natural human distribution of errors. So we try to model it ourselves. And of course, you can use it, this method, as well as AugmentX for increasing the robustness of the model. It's up to you. Um, and uh, final words for our presentation. Hopefully in June this year, we will release open API to both these methods so you can convert uh, your data into the corrupted sentences in order to whether you want to uh, deal with the spell checking problem or you want to just use it for increase of robustness, never mind. But you will have, in the end of the day, you will have simple API to both these tasks. Uh, these APIs will be accompanied by the whole data hub of spell checking uh, data set for Russian language, including existing data set and uh, our new data set, multi domain that contains data from five domain, annotated uh, by two rounds of human labeling, right? Um, so it's fine grained, high quality data sets will be in this data hub. And it also will contain uh, a family of uh, generative sort of models for spelling correction in uh, first Russian language. Yeah, they range from uh, 400 million parameters to 1.2 uh, billion parameters. Uh, this will be a library that contain all these features and we hope to release it in June 2023, so stay tuned. Now we move to the demo part. Okay, now uh, it will be a quick introduction to our second method. Uh, the graphs that you see on the screen is the distribution of number of errors per sentence in the rule spell rule. Uh, this is the corpus uh, for Russian spell checking, so it's uh, contain uh, natural mistakes, so they're made by human. And we try to corrupt the source, the correct sentences with our method and with argument text. And as you can see, our uh, argument text. Uh, somehow run the place the errors uh, across the sentences, but uh, to be honest, it uh, doesn't need a parallel corpus before to fit it. And uh, our method perfectly fit the initial distribution. Next, we have um, distribution of types of errors within the corpus. Again, argument X uh, is doing his own thing. So it doesn't really account for the real distribution of errors in the corpus. And our mess tried to follow up pretty closely to what's going on in the corpus itself. And then you have graphs of uh, relative position and sentence or the corresponding errors for each, for each type. We don't mess them up. Uh, so, uh, as you can, we're running out of time, so we'll skip this. Uh, as you can see, graphs on the left side follow pretty closely the original distribution, and on the right side, you can see things uh, are getting pretty random. So, um, the overall conclusion is that 
if you have your data with natural uh, mistyping, you can fit our method spelling corruption, uh, statistic based spelling corruption, and you will definitely get in the end um, errors, spelling errors that could probably be be made by human. And if you don't have such opportunity, you can use augment text and uh, have your corrupted data uh, in the nick of time. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we show second demo just quickly because uh, timeless. Yes, if it's just uh, app, uh, so I threw quickly uh, review the functionality. You have uh, two text edit uh, field where you can type the name of the trainable and observer model. Uh, uh, the second uh, text field uh, for for text uh, which you want to corrupt and uh, and now we have two columns uh, black box and augmentex uh, we can separate their use uh, so uh, also you can uh, choose uh, finally distance uh, for for measure is the uh, original and uh, corrupted phrase uh, and augmentx uh, has all methods uh, let's uh, set the word random for example we can choose the percentage uh, for augmentx and uh, count uh, word candidates uh, for black box model. And now we can apply our uh, methods. You can see that uh, the cosine distance uh, between original and corrupted phrase is uh, 0.89. Uh, thank you for listening.